All right, uh, the final uniform circular motion problem that we need to deal with uh, deals with banked curves. So there's two parts to this uh, presentation. One part is for the AP Physics 1 students uh, that will deal with frictionless uh, ramps. And then our C students will have to include friction as part of the analysis. So it's a little bit more complicated mathematically, um, but really setting it up is, is the same as any other uniform circular motion problem. So um, if we look at just someone driving along a level ro roadway in a straight line, then if we look at the dynamics of the forces acting on the car in the y direction, um, again, speeding up, slowing down, coming out of the page, but the normal force is going to be equal to the weight vector. Um, as we've seen before, when we look at things on a bank turn, which you'll see a lot in um, on ramps and off ramps of freeways, or maybe if you watch some of the racing, track racing on television, you'll see that there are bank curves and it actually helps them maintain that curve by banking it a little bit. So the coordinate system that we want to, we want to choose are, is going to reflect the, the motion that's being analyzed. We're no longer concerned with something, a box or something sliding down the ramp. We have a car that is moving out of the plane of the page and is kind of rounding a turn on a banked curve. Um, so we have uh, the circular motion of the car taking a turn, um, but we are also, the bank turn problems are concerned with the car not driving too fast that they can't s maintain that circular path and start to spin out and in this case would spin up the curve. Um, so the force that's going to act as our centripetal force, if we look at the circle in this horizontal plane right here, take this vector, oops, go back, back, oh, got it right there. Um, the force that's going to act as our centripetal force is actually going to be this radial component of our normal force. So that's what's going to be providing our centripetal force. Now this is a big departure from the techniques that we use to analyze linear motion of up and down the ramp where it was the weight vector that was broken up into its components. For banked turns, this is a change. So be mindful of it. Be careful. It's a common pitfall. This is when we want to break the normal force into its components. All right, next up. All right, so mathematically, what are we looking at? Again, we're going to represent our car, shrink it down to a dot particle model. Um, again, this, if we look at the angle, the banking angle of the ramp, and we look at the geometry of it, this would be another interior angle here, um, that this angle right here would be theta, so this would be 90 minus theta, so this would be theta up here, so we can kind of run through the geometry of that. So if we look in mathematically in the linear direction, so we have our y coordinate here um, where the car is not sliding up the ramp at all, we're going to have our weight vector equal to the normal force times the cosine of theta. So these two vectors are going to be equal to each other. Now the centripetal force, this is the one that we want to have the radial component, and that's going to be n sine theta, and that's going to be equal to mv squared over r. So mathematically, it's the same stuff we've done before, except it's just a ramp problem that we have to treat it a little bit differently. Okay, so uh, AP1 people, you don't have to see this part. This is where it gets a little more complicated. Um, AP Physics 1 will only deal with frictionless ramps. So for the C people, um, where we're going to have some friction between the tires, so we want to hit. think about that maximum speed that you could take with the turn so that you don't sliding so you're not sliding up the ramp and spinning out. So you're going to have a force of static friction that is going to act along the ramp. So just like before, um, the normal force is going to have a centripetal component or a radial component, nc thi theta. Uh, static friction is also going to have a component along that radial line. So again, we'll break it up into the two parts. First, we're going to look in the uh, perpendicular to the plane of the motion. So we have our y component. We have n cosine theta here. We'll e minus the weight vector here, and then minus this vertical component of your static frictional force, which would be fs times the sine of the angle. So this is the purple, goes with the purple vectors. Blue goes with the blue vectors. And then mg is the black vectors there, so trying to keep it all straight. So uh, again, if we're looking for that maximum speed, it gives us our permission to use fs max, and that is going to be equal to our coefficient of static friction times the normal force, and we don't need to do anything else. So plugging this piece right into here, uh, we get an expression for equilibrium for perpendicular to the plane of the circular motion. So this is what it looks like here.
So you could factor out the normal force, you could get an expression to solve for the normal force. Second part is to look at what forces are acting as the centripetal force. So now our centripetal force is going to be n sine theta, this is acting towards the center of the circle, plus this radial component of our static frictional force, which, which would be Fs times the cosine of theta, that's our perpendicular, I'm um, sorry, our uh, adjacent angle there acting towards the center, and that's going to be equal to our centripetal cell, our centripetal force, mv squared over r. So again, same idea, our static friction is going to be mu s times the normal force, so kind of plugging all that this piece in for that, we have an expression for the normal force equal to mv squared over r. So between this equation here and the one from the previous page here, you have two equations, typically one, uh, two unknowns that you can solve for a system of equations. So that's the only complication adding friction to the banked curves.